Good evening, folks. I thought it would be nice to give an update on the magnetic field situation from one of the papers we did not cover last year, especially since we have been reviewing all the other relevant information lately. So we recently saw that China launched their own magnetic field monitoring mission. They're as concerned as the observers are about the ongoing magnetic pole shift. The evidence, of course, suggests that these events are major environmental disasters bringing climate changes, radiation changes, and other challenges to the planet and the biosphere causing extinctions. The major studies of the last few years all say the same thing, that whether you look at the environment or the species living through these events, magnetic changes, like the pole shift ongoing now, are critically damaging to the Earth. Now, as I alluded a moment ago, this scientific field has put out so much information recently we can't possibly cover it all, but I want to jump back to a paper from last year that we had skipped over. This one, like the others, suggest that these events are major problems. And they focus this analysis on the current changes to the South Atlantic anomaly as, of course, it is the weakest point right now during this magnetic shift. To quickly review why these magnetic excursions are such problems, the increased radiation affects the ozone layer, which amplifies UV exposure to the surface and helps modulate the major climate changes, but also has a profound impact on cellular function, organs, ion channels that mediate all of our body processes, and in humans, strong impacts on cardiology and psychology. This is as the magnetic field changes are hampering animal navigation and again, cellular processes of animals, plants, bacteria, and fungus. These all combine to hit the entire food chain up and down the line. But that paper we skipped over, also contained an interesting factual point, that while evidence suggests that the southern magnetic fields were stronger than the north for thousands of years, that has recently changed. In the last 75 years, the south has now become weaker than the north. We can add this to other key points, like the fact that the magnetic field is down by 25%, maybe even 30% at this point, and has gone from losing 5% per century to 5% per decade, and is accelerating still. This actually could be along to 5% every two to three years at this point. The North Magnetic Pole blew right past the geographic North Pole, kept speeding up and is now heading south towards Russia. And while the Northern Magnetic Pole is still moving faster, the South Magnetic Pole shift has accelerated in the last decade. Now with the South, now definitively weaker than the North, and with the implications of the ongoing shift from the papers we've covered and those we haven't, it will be important to keep our eyes on the space weather and solar flares of our daily focus here at the channel, also on the poppycock of a civilization that is unfolding as a clown world all around us, and yet always keeping in mind this magnetic field shift in the background. You honestly can't sleep on any of it. Now just for fun, here are some past videos on some of that nonsense unfolding all around us. Some of it is the result of a corrupt and honestly satanic overlord paradigm who is trying to control the world, and yet some of it is also due to the magnetic field. Good evening, folks. First, if you have not noticed that the world seems to be going crazy, please ask someone close to you for help lifting up the rock under which you've been living. Politically, culturally, economically, there's an idiocracy building in the world today, and there are no shortage of reasons to be stressed, to feel squeezed, to feel like the world you knew, and which at least made a bit of sense, is falling apart all around you. But in addition to the obvious, what you see on TV, there's something else affecting every living creature on this planet, and human complex thought and brain systems are extremely vulnerable to it. On top of everything else on our shoulders, our ability to carry that weight is under attack. The magnetic poles of this planet are shifting faster and faster, and with them, the overall magnetic field strength protecting the planet is weakening. We lost 10% of that field in 150 years, then five more from only 2000 to 2010, and the experts said we had gone from losing 5% of the field per century to 5% per decade. We are now more than 20% down, and the shift continues. This is important because we all live in an electromagnetic environment, not only our bodies themselves, but the earth, the atmosphere, the global electric circuit, the geomagnetic field. We've spent copious amounts of time on the channel reviewing the physiological impacts to our bodies, but the brain and cognition are not immune, with hundreds of studies confirming this concept as well. The weakening magnetic field of earth 
means that we are even more vulnerable to the electromagnetic effects of space weather, solar flares, geomagnetic storms, and cosmic rays. In Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, Chapter 6, we compiled many of the relevant studies which show that both the particle impacts and electromagnetic fields produced by space weather have intimate interaction with our brains. Cognitive defects, emotional instability, neuroinflammation, and some of the details are profound. Anxiety amplification has been repeatedly studied and confirmed, with in vivo animal studies now elucidating the mechanisms driving the many times noted statistical correlations. Specific impacts to the hippocampus, and especially the locus ceruleus, which affects our ability to deal with panic, anxiety, and fear, were well established even before those mechanisms were discovered in physical form. These vulnerabilities are increasing by the day as our magnetic field weakens, and they are added on top of a world seemingly spiraling out of control, which is also quite stressful. Some of the most basic signs of the sickness are easy to see. And while you may instantly jump to the Bible when reading some of these, recognize they are also found in other religious texts describing these times and the papers in the journals from psychologists, psychiatrists, and biologists. Major changes in thinking, especially related to those you love, is a prime example. It's really not all that unlike the rebellious and arrogant anger of a teenager whose brain is changing. If you feel those changes for your spouse, your children, if you find yourself trying to peg a rationale on minutia that never stopped you from loving them or being there for them before, you should take serious note. Temptation is where I'm hoping you can either find a correlation to your faith or look past that concept to realize this is legit science. Temptation affects everyone and it's natural, but you should also be aware of it and how you are usually affected how you've been affected throughout your life, and if you are feeling the pull to a greater and greater degree than usual. This is where I hope to communicate from the heart and not offend you. No, the sexual revolution and ultra-strong drug awakening people are having is not legit. The good feelings they bring are band-aids masking deeper issues, and they are not the answer to your finding yourself, happiness, or salvation. And finally, an overwhelming sense of fear and hopelessness is gripping the world in addition to the anger and frustration, and nobody can really be blamed for that. But this reinforces the first three, and yet, for someone who sees the bigger picture, this should be recognizably antithetical to the paradigm unfolding. If you find yourself doing things you know are wrong, or if you don't see it as right or wrong, doing things you wouldn't otherwise do, especially high-risk behavior. You need to resist the urge to say to yourself, well, maybe this is all natural. Why not just go with it and see where the wind takes me? To think it is you letting go of your previous conceptions and restrictions is utterly incorrect and dangerous. For those who aren't into the religious side of things, do you believe in body energy, chakras, magnetic personalities, affirmations, the effects of positive or negative attitude, the energy and power of crystals or certain rocks or locations on the earth? Know this, if any of those things have any merit, so does the soul. And that means this place has rules. You don't get to pick and choose where it fits your mood or reflects upon your behavior. That is called being a child, being a hypocrite. It's one of the primary reasons we're seeing so many problems today. But alas, knowledge is power, and there will be some of you watching this who will be able to see perspective and overcome these hardships without crumbling. You know, the placebo effect is real, and it can help. It does go both ways. So know that your thoughts, words, attitude, and outlook have powerful potential to influence yourself and the people around you. There are some who will breeze through this with minimal effect, whether by strength of body or mind or soul. But there are also very, very clear indicators of increased vulnerability. And any psychologist worth the paper on which their degree is printed will tell you that combining these vulnerabilities is the worst idea. Unhealed trauma from parents, work, childhood interactions like bullying, past relationships, or physical harm. It's critical. The best summarization of this statement is that the mind can temporarily forget, but the body keeps the score forever. Drugs and alcohol, including many prescribed drugs, 
will only enhance this. I am aware that my audience includes big fans of cannabis and even hallucinogens, but even those are not bulletproof, and the intentional nature of their use is where they can be helpful. But that is quite elusive amidst the traumatized, the lost, the suffering, and they can and often do exacerbate traumatic issues, again, as a band-aid, if nothing else. Negative influences are difficult because they tell you what you want to hear. The yes man, the comforting voice telling you to embrace these new feelings. Everything is okay. You're not going crazy. That your long-term steadfast patterns are toxic. And yes, it's a great trick, but it is also unequivocally true that they usually just reinforce poor decisions, poor thinking, and poor attitude. How about that last one? Poor diet and poor mental attitude. There are ties into the substance abuse issues listed above, but it's also a separate beast. Your body has protection built in that can help fight the negative, hold the line, stay the course, but they require a healthy body and mind. And without them, or in combination with these other risk factors, you are left utterly vulnerable. At the end of the day, when you realize that the world is in fact a bit rage-inducing, confusing, and often senseless. When you realize that the earth and sun are not exactly being friendly to the situation, and then when you look at what you are doing and thinking, I hope you realize how at risk we are. And all of a sudden, a piece of the puzzle of why the world is going the way it's going manifests before your eyes. Sorry to say, don't expect this to change. It's only getting worse. Be strong, have eyes open, and no fear. Be safe, everyone. Good evening, folks. As Earth's magnetic field continues weakening, I found myself a nexus for another increasingly prominent thing, communication about the stress of it all. About a month ago, we made this video. It went over the natural science connections between cognitive issues, emotional instability, and other psychological problems associated with increasing cosmic radiation. Lots of journal articles on the topic, and it's a hallmark of our current situation as we lose the magnetic protection surrounding our planet. To quickly review, we humans are in a tough spot right now, especially in the mental stability arena. Not only are we increasingly under duress from deteriorating economic, political, and cultural issues, but there's worry about the weather and climate, especially for you, the observers, as compounding concerns over the sun and magnetic field weigh heavily. As the world makes us more vulnerable to these emotional and cognitive issues, the events taking place are adding a tremendous more amount of stress. What a difficult situation for an observer to face. Again, for us specifically, I imagine few of you have had purely positive interactions with other people about these topics. Disbelief and ostracization, if not outright anger, and lost relationships are no stranger to any observer who actively attempts to communicate about these topics. Creating a feeling of isolation in the awareness, on top of the terrible weight of the knowledge itself, on top of what's also affecting everyone who doesn't even know what a solar flare is. It is both comforting and unnerving to read what you guys are sending me these days. From the everyday observer to clinical practitioners, there is a surging uptick in psychological issues, and it's incredibly difficult to handle. As I just mentioned a minute ago, this is especially difficult for observers. The comfort comes when I realize we're not alone, and that there's a good explanation for what we're seeing in the world and feeling inside of ourselves. There has been overwhelming sentiment of wanting to give up, feeling like we're losing everything, and a feeling of discomfort in general when trying to deal with the everything of the world today. Listen closely. You are not alone in feeling this way. Don't give up. This is one of the cosmic tests to see who is going to make it to play in what is honestly the cosmic and geophysical version of the Super Bowl, of survival. And you are here for it, something so amazing it's almost magic. And while that doesn't mean it's good or an enjoyable thing, it does mean you're being tested, and you wouldn't be here if you didn't have the chance to prevail. I believe that. Don't give up. Even though your heart knows this isn't going to get easier, it's going to get harder. Know that you are growing and changing with every challenge. Know that others are walking with you shoulder to shoulder even if you can't see them, hold their hand, or give them a hug. Not even I am immune to these struggles, and I can only imagine how challenging it must be for some of you out there. Don't give up. You are part of something special. 
You are worth every effort made to stand up to the brutal forces that are dividing us, causing emotional, visceral reactions, and making life harder every day. This is you. This is me. Weight of the world on the shoulders. Don't give up. Because more and more people are waking up every day. And while they may not be sitting beside you, they walk with you. And so do I. I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.